say hello to Traveler-san. Through the creative use of game mechanics, and at times glitches, we're on a quest to see just how much of Genshin Impact can be completed using only the Traveler. And we sometimes break things. If you enjoyed the series, do make sure to like and subscribe. It helps Traveler-san out a lot. And with that, Traveler Sun has achieved Adventure Rank 25. This is a very important milestone. The reason? Reputation. It thus starts Traveler Sun's training to be like Venti. With requests and bounties unlocked, work towards two of the most important items can begin. Those items are the Windcatcher and Portable Waypoints, both of which are rewards from Mondstadt Reputation. There's also the Red Feather fan from Inazuma's, but it'll be a while before that can be earned. Unfortunately, Leoway's rewards don't aid in exploration. Condensed Resin will speed up future artifact farming, but as for the Adepti Seeker Stove, that doesn't do much, which is a shame. If it could just inflict pyro on characters like other cooking areas, then Leoway would be a contender for best reputation rewards, at least in regards to Traveler Sans case. Having the Archon quest is a big head start, and yup. This is where I would be showing footage of completing the weekly requests and bounties. One bounty of which saw Traveler San get destroyed three times by the same Ruin Hunter, if said footage wasn't lost. Uh, this is my bad, and I apologize. Pretty upset about it. This here is what the script looked like as I was writing it, and you can see the empty space where I stopped writing it after discovering that the footage was lost. What a terrible feeling, let me tell you. Doubly so because I had got slapped around by that Ruin Hunter, and I was looking forward to making it into a funny segment. But since I cannot do so, allow me to regale you, dear audience, with the tale of Traveler San and the Ruin Hunter. To do so, a trip to Inazuma was made, to visit an old pal, Xavier, from Tatara Tales. Traveler San learned all about how to make and present a motion picture, and thus, the tale unfolds. It was a, well, bright and sunny day, and actually pretty peaceful out. What few clouds drifted on their endless voyage through the sky were big and fluffy, like the most delectable delights one might find served at a fair. But such a leisurely affair this was not, for Traveler San had taken up the mantle of Bounty Hunter. With detective work that would leave even Shikano and Heizo in awe, Traveler San had followed three tracks to find his foe. Although he did wonder why the tracks in no way pointed towards said foe, and instead it left him running laps around Stormbearer Point. With the final confrontation at hand, he ran up the cliff and leapt with great force. Actually, he messed up his sprint lunge and plummeted at terminal velocity towards the ground, and had to deploy his wind glider in emergency. This blunder alerted the Ruin Hunter of his presence, and its first action, yes, its very first action was not to turn around and assess the situation, but to lift into the sky and rain hellfire upon the land. Traveler San did what anyone would do. He ran around flailing and screaming, as explosion after explosion tore the land asunder. But then he spotted a mechanism, a time trial. Upon its activation, the wondrous device created glide boost rings. An idea took hold of Traveler San, and weaving through the endless bombardment, he spread his glider and flew around the nearest ring. His plan? To enter from the opposite side, to use it to boost his way towards the Ruin Hunter, and then plunge attack to bring his foe to the ground, much like he'd done with many an Eye of Storm. Except that didn't happen, and he instead took a mortar to the face. And so the score became 1-0 in favor of the Ruin Hunter. Reviving at the teleport waypoint nearby, like literally right next to it, he spent no time to gather his thoughts, no time to eat, to rest, to regain his energy. He rushed right back into the fray. Alerted of his return, the Ruin Hunter's first action, yes, its very first action, 
was not to turn around and assess the situation, but to whirl around with a vicious swing of its blade and instantly KO our hero a second time. Revived again, Traveler San let his gaze wander to the blue ocean above, to the fluffy mountains still drifting to destinations unknown, all the while he helped himself to a single serving of delicious radish veggie soup. And then he rushed back into the fray. And the Ruin Hunter's first action, okay, it didn't actually do anything crazy right off the bat this time, but its lunge attack downed Traveler San for a third time about halfway through the fight. And uh, not so long story short, Traveler San healed fully and went in with a fire lit under his rear because the timer was nearing its end. He won, of course, and they say it's third time's the charm. The audacity. Clearly it takes four times. So yeah, uh, I had just enough reputation to get the wing catcher with this first week of bounties. With hefty combat out of the way, it's onward to getting the needed items to smith the awesome device. Starting with picking flowers. Exhilarating stuff, I know, but hold onto your hats, because we're about to turn up the excitement tenfold. With mining. And lastly, farming hurricane seeds from the Animo Hypostasis. Lightning slap! Lightning slap! Take this! Thunderclap! All right, finally, we can smith this. It's great to have the wind catcher. It'll give Animo and Electro Traveler San a bit more versatility within domains. While early game domains are awesome, as seen in the previous episode, future ones are unfortunately far more limiting. It may just come in handy. We're halfway to venti status. Luckily, the second half takes about 30 seconds. All we have to do is talk to Marjorie, It'll be sad to see one of Paimon's interruptions finally go. They each play once per login when I walk through this area, but the gadget we can buy from here is just too big to pass up. Didn't she just say no Mora here? Goods for goods. No Mora accepted here. The Wind Blessed Harpastum. This is sort of a bow for any non-archer character. Well, it's more like a slingshot, but still. Quite fitting to be getting this now, what with Golden Apple Archipelago having just returned in 2.8. The previous event there is where this item originates from. With this power, not only can Traveler San take up a stance like he's a villain trying to command people, but he can aim and shoot projectiles. This thing might not deal damage, but it has collision and can be used to destroy certain objects. For example... Animo Slimes. Crates and barrels, oh, they cannot be destroyed. Explosive barrels also won't detonate, but it can knock fruit from trees. That's useful, I guess. Would be amazing if this chopped wood, since the tree shakes like it's been hit with a weapon. Can we hunt with it? Nope, it just spooks the animal when hit. Although, it does draw the attention of enemies, if there's ever a need to do so from afar. So essentially, what I'm trying to say is it's an anti-floating slime device. Since there are an abundance of those in Leeway via floaty bloaty challenges, I expect it will come in handy. Shout out to K for the tip. It should be noted that it cannot be used within domains. Some gadgets are just like this, and they aren't able to be used within them. That's a bit of a setback, but then it's not too often floating slimes are present in domains. With an aiming mode and the power to create updrafts, Traveler San basically has a limited version of Venti's exploration kit. Honestly, Windcatcher existing is the main reason I've never wished for Venti, although I suppose his skill can create unlimited updrafts with much less cooldown in between. So he's still got that advantage for exploration. 
Gadgets gathered and testing done, it's off to the final one-time domain of the region. Investigate. Secret hideout. This would be impossible at the moment if I didn't have Electro. I literally cannot start the challenge without it. It's a simple combat challenge and well worth the time for a Shrine of Death's Key. And to wrap up this episode, Razor's Story Quest. Very short and straightforward. Andreas, this encounter is not to serve as our anticipated clash. You taunt me by using only half your power, but Andreas, I'm afraid even your full power may not be enough. So when the time comes to sign off Mondstadt, a time that is quickly approaching, our duel will be the closing chapter. So, Second Wolf Lord, prepare yourself, because traveler san will be coming for you, and behind him will be a trail of your fellow fallen Mondstadt bosses. Though there are quests to do, exploration goals to achieve before then, the region will conclude with the ultimate combat challenge, Mondstadt Boss Rush, no healing. However, Mondstadt is being put on hold for the time being. A wondrous summer vacation in the Golden Apple Archipelago awaits Traveler San, and so we'll be heading there post haste. There's just one problem, Traveler San doesn't have the requirements to reach the islands. That being the case, allow me to introduce you to the guy who will enjoy Traveler San's vacation for him, my old alt account, Iron Man, who is going to temporarily be renamed Traveler San with an asterisk. He's got everything we need to recreate Traveler San, even a stamina gauge that has never been upgraded, but with all the requirements to go to the islands. He's only level 16, so we'll boost him up to Traveler San's current level of 23 give him a fillet blade, and send him on his merry way to have a wonderfully stressful time on the islands because this account is world level 5. For reference, Traveler San is only world level 1. Something tells me I'll end up having to upgrade this dude a bit more, but we'll see. If you're enjoying the series, do make sure to like, subscribe, and share. It helps out a lot. Traveler San still has plenty of content to overcome. And with an entirely new region on the horizon, things are about to be busier than ever. But for now, beach time. This is Musashi and Traveler-san signing off. Till next time.